Jesus. Give him a shout of praise. Jesus, who is worthy to be glorified. Uh, going out in the background is the Center of Revival uh, Worship Team and Mass Choir. They were leading us in praises. I hope everybody that is watching us has been blessed. Now we are going into the Word of God in the name of Jesus. God bless you so much, choir. <laughs> to God be the glory and the praise. And all of you that are watching us live here on Lighthouse Television, together with the congregation that is with us in the studios. Amen. Amen. We bless the Lord so much for the grace and for the great things that God is performing in our midst. Uh, we give him all the praise and all the glory and all the adoration in Jesus' mighty name. I want us to go uh, into the word of God. Together with us in the studio is my friend, my pastor, my brother, Pastor Remy. And uh, any moment now he will be. Amen. Today we're going to be... We're going to be sharing the platform together. We're going to be sharing the platform together. And we're going to be sharing the word of God and uh, dissecting the atom of God's word in scripture. We're going to be feeding on the master's table, sharing the bread of life. And my hope and my expectation is that none of uh, the saints of God or the children of God that are watching us, uh, wherever you're watching us from, probably here in Uganda or probably far in the diaspora, even as you're watching, the word of God carries life. The word of God carries life. The word of God has an impact so big that no matter where you find yourself, you could be outside, you could be beyond the continent of Africa, but wherever you're watching from, the grace of God is sufficient and the hand of God is going to work wondrously in your life. This is my expectation that your life will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Somebody say, my life. Somebody say, my life will never be the same in the name of Jesus. I want us to rush so quickly in the word of God. I want us to uh, rush it so quickly in the word of God in the book of 2 Second, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, there is a message that God has uh, laid upon my heart that I believe so strongly that is going to bring strength uh, to the body of Christ. Not only strength, that God is going to minister to you. That the spirit of God is going to communicate to you through the pain, through the confusion, through the frustration, the devastations, the vicissitudes that life has thrown your way. And I realize that uh, every time we are going through something that is obnoxious, one of the things that is very important and a strength to us, the children of God, is the word of God. The Bible says he sends his word and he heals our diseases. So when the word of God is preached, the entrance of, of God's word brings life and light. May this word, may the message of today be a transforming message to your life. I believe that most of the believers and saints of God, the children of God, we are in the turning point or we are in the moment that is a decisive moment. And wherever you find yourself in a decisive moment, you need one word from the master's table to help empower you in the choices and the decisions that you're about to take. We realize that the, the world we are living in is a world of battle. It's a battle between our faith and our realities because the enemy attacks us based on what is visible and seen. But we win with God, we win with Christ based on our faith and our level of faith in God. The battle is raised between the things around us and the God we believe. Because some things are very evident according to our strength, according to our abilities, according to our education. There is no possibility for us to excel and to be victorious. But there is something strong about faith in God. Of course, the Bible talks in the book of Hebrews, where I'm not going to preach in chapter 12. It says, uh, beholding that there is a cloud of witnesses that are ahead of us, above us, there is a cloud of witnesses among us. God will always raise people in our midst, so he will cause people to be ahead of us, that we look to, and then our faith shall rise, that our faith muscles shall be empowered, that the muscles of our faith shall be stronger and stronger. I want us to go into the book of Second Corinthians. Uh, chapter 12. Now, I'm going to be running through two, uh, two translations. Uh, one of them is uh, the full verse cross-reference Bible. 
and then the other one is the King James Version. Now, in King James, this is what the Bible says. It says, it is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows such as one was, such a one was caught up in the, heart, in the third heaven. Now somebody shout third heaven. So he's caught up in the third heaven. That means he has gone into a dimension higher above the usual. We realize that any time you go higher in the things of God, there is an authority that God bestows upon your life. Because for you to ascend in the heights in the heavenlies, there should be a price paid so big. Now we realize it says that this man 14 years ago, he ascended into the third heaven. Now we realize in verse 3, and he says, And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, but God knows. How he was caught up into the paradise and had inexpressible words, which it is not lawful for man to utter. Of such a one I will boast. Yet of myself I will not boast except in my infirmities. Now, Paul is trying to reveal to us that in spite of his ascension into the dimensions of godliness, still he does not brag. He's not braggadocious about his heights in God, but he's bragging about the infirmities, the, the points of pain in his life. Because in spite of how great I am in the things of God, there is something so physical and human that keeps me low, that keeps me humble, that keeps me connected, and that keeps me down on my feet. He says, now I don't boast in my heights or in my greatness in the things of God. My ranks are high, but still there's something so real about me that keeps me human. Now he's dealing with the humanness of his life. I'm going to be a little bit, uh, I'm going to be a little bit theological, then we shall switch into the, you know, into the spiritual panorama. But listen, he, he says, in spite of the heights that have ascended into the things of God, my rank in God, anybody that acce uh, can access the third heavens is an authority. He's an authority. But in spite of his authority in the things of God, he's living in a dual personality. Personality number one is his connection to God through the heights of his ascension. And then the personality number two is the reality of Paul as a human being. Because no matter how high you go, you are still a human being. So God knows how, knows how to help us to be subjected by the things around us. Oh my God. Now let us, let us proceed and continue. Now listen to what the Bible says. It says, for though I might not desire to boast, I will not be a fool. For I will speak the truth, but I refrain, I refrain lest anyone should think of me above what he sees or, or to be or hears from me. All right. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me lest i be exalted above measure now when you read this verse when you do this verse when you study through this verse to those of us uh, in theology that do uh, phraseology you understand that the word a thorn was given unto me anything that is given unto you you didn't have it when he was ascending unto the heavens he was minus the thorn but in return from the heavenlies when god saw when god saw the the, the greatness and the heights where Paul had ascended, he realizes that for Paul to be controllable, I have to give him something. He doesn't like it, but I release it into his life that it will control him, that it will control his ego, that it will help him to subjugate his, his lifestyle under the power and the grace of God. He says a thorn was given. Somebody shout given. So he didn't have the thorn. He, was, he didn't request it, but it was given unto him and it was a thorn in the flesh. Now, spiritually, he ascends because he questions, he says, number one, when I ascended into the third heavens, I cannot figure out whether I was in the body or in the spirit. That means, spiritually, I get godly consciousness. Spiritually, I go into the heights of the revelation of God. But physically, I'm connected to the world. God is a trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and man is a trichotomy, the spirit that possesses a soul and lives in the body. Now you realize that my spirit gives me God consciousness, the awareness of God. I need a spirit to connect to God. Because according to St. John chapter 4, the Bible says that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must be in spirit and in truth. So my spirit connects me to God. My soul gives me self-awareness. I need a mind to understand my life. 
but my body connects me to the world in my body are the five senses which they call the sensual perception there's my sight there's my smell there's my hearing there's my taste and there's my smell okay the five senses now in my body are the senses that connect me to the world and my mind gives me awareness to myself my spirit gives me revelations and understanding of god now he's number one bragging about the heights by spirit but then in the flesh God has given him a form that it will be able to, he will be able to control him. I want you to follow me. I don't want to lose you. Let us continue. Just two more verses and I'll begin. Now realize, you realize in, in the next verse here, uh, hallelujah. We realize in the next verse where we're going. Uh, this is what the Bible says. Just a second. In the next verse where we're, all right. In verses uh, seven, lest I should be exalted above measure. Somebody say exalted above measure. So for him not to be exalted above measure, God has released something into his life that will control him, but it will not go beyond the usual. Like when the power supply is too strong and there's nothing, there's no device that can control it, everything in the house, every device will blow up. Because no matter how strong the electric current is, it has to be controlled. If it is not controlled, it will blow out the whole house. It will blow out everything, every system that uses electricity. So what God uses is he sends something to us. We live with it in spite of the godliness we have. There is something so human and something that defines the enemy in our lives. But God has allowed it to happen and his God is holding us. And by the time I'm done, your life will never be the same. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Now, let us go to verses 9. It says, concerning the things, all right, uh, a measure, okay, unless I should be exalted above measure by, by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given unto me. Now, a thorn, other people call it, they say it was a figurative language. Others say that God, that the writer was using a poetic device because something to do with thorn is something that pricks you and makes you uncomfortable. If you have a thorn in your foot and you're walking in a shoe, I'm sure you can't walk steady. You will walk with a limping because there's something that makes you uncomfortable. A thorn, when you have a thorn in your body, no matter how beautiful you are, it will, it will make you, it will keep you on tension because there's something that does not allow you to enjoy the abundance of your joy. But it's a device of control. Somebody said device of control. Say it again, say divine device of control. Now listen to me, uh -huh. concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I rather boast in my infirmities than the power of Christ, okay, in my infirmity, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen. I want to preach to, I want, I want to talk to you in a subject entitled, managing with the thorn in the flesh 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 i would i would begin by telling i'll begin by telling you that the lives we live are fine are, 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 are strongly ordained by god everything about our present and everything about our future was foreordained by God. It is very surprising that God chose us before the foundations of the world. That means before our creation, we were chosen. Before our birth, we were chosen. Now, before the foundations of the world, some people have attested and found out that the universe has lived for at least 500 million years. Others say 500 billion years, according to uh, the scientists, that is what they say. And those people that, you know, are dealing with anthropology, they have realized that the human race or the people that live have lived for thousands or billions of years. Now, if God chose me before billions of years of the creation, that means I was an existence in the heavenlies and in the mind of God. I was not only an existence, but I was chosen before birth. Did you get it? There's nothing about my current life that is away from the conversance and the cognizance of God. He's informed about my everything. As a matter of fact, and then another, trans and another scripture says that he determines our end from the beginning. And then he says to Jeremiah, he says, before I formed, I fashioned, before I fashioned you in the belly, I knew you. That means I was an existence in the mind of God before I was formed for people to see. That means 
that my body was only a vehicle, it was only a house that would keep that that God knew. I lived in the mind of God. That means everything about my journey is in the parameters and the brackets of God. Everything about my lifestyle, everything about my family and future, everything is in the hands of God. That is why I pause to rejoice. Because no matter what the devil does, by the time the enemy arose, I was chosen. I was chosen. I did not begin in the earth realm, but my existence began from the eternal realm. I began from the heavenlies. By the time I was given birth by my parents, I was chosen. It is surprising that most of us that are watching and most of us that are here, everything about your past and lifestyle was already in the books of God. You went to clubs. You did clubbing. You did everything. Drug addictions. But chosen. Everything about your past. God was watching you because he was waiting for a, a divine rendezvous point. A rendezvous point where mercy and grace and truth would collide with your life that God would begin to draw you in into the journey of Christ the Bible says that nobody comes unless the father soon drags them I was dragged by God I was chosen by God I was pulled by God I was loved by God I was chosen by God I was not rejected by God but I was chosen in God before the foundations of the world so then God becomes the determinant of my journey you realize when you read the back the lifestyle of Paul the conversion of Paul Paul was one of the treacherous people that were structuring the church and through all that he was still chosen doing evil but chosen for good struggling with evil but yet chosen for greatness there are some of you that are watching right now you are watching with a bottle of beer close to you but you don't know why the passion has driven you to switch to Lighthouse Television. That the message may be preached. I want to be honest with you that most of the great men and women of God that are great today, the Christian par excellence, the preachers and the men of, and women of God, they have a past and a background that is very funny. All of them when they begin to testify, some of them were addicts. Others were doing a lot of stuff that was nothing to connect them to godliness. But because they were chosen. They were already chosen when you're chosen mercy will always come running like a prisoner set free the grace of god will find you where the world has thrown you you were chosen 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 before the foundations of the world that is why the devil has no power because when god chose us he anointed us he tells jeremiah before i formed you in the belly i knew you I sanctified you. I ordained you. There was an ordination before birth. When God ordains, he established our footsteps. That is why death tried to catch you. But the blood said, touch not my anointed. Some of us should have died yesterday. But the grace of God was always surrounding us. Because you have a purpose. You have a life to live in Jesus' name. I wonder whether I have any survivors. I survived by grace. I survived by mercy. And my life has a future. I have a future. Regardless of my past. Regardless of my errors. Regardless of my predicaments. I have a future. Because I was chosen. Not in my family, not in my society, but I was chosen in God, Elohim. I was chosen in El Shaddai. I was chosen in Adonai. I was chosen in the Lion of Judah. I was chosen in the Rock of Ages. I was chosen, 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 chosen. That is why when the gospel was preached, there was a connection with your heart. Hard as you were, there was a grace that kept touched you. That is why you're a Christian today. That is why you're born again. You're struggling but born again. You're failing but born again. Disappointed but born again. In pain but born again. Thank God I'm born again. I love what Donnie McCracken says, born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again.
I'm born again. I'm still broke, but I'm born again. I'm fighting, but I'm born again. Despised, but born again. Rejected, but born again. Alienated, but born again. They see me as a black sheep in my society. But I am born again. Somebody shall born again. I'm born again. That means when you're born again, that's when, that's when your journey in God begins. Now, when God chooses Paul at the conversion, first of all, he smites him when he was on the street. We're going to attack the children of God. He smites him and Paul falls down. And God says, why persecute thou me? He said, who art thou? He said, I am Jesus. But now, in spite of your treacherous ways, You've been hollering and you've been pre preparing atrocities against the church and against the body of Christ. But in spite of the atrocities you've been planning, you're chosen. Yeah. Chosen. Be careful with people that have an ugly past. When they stand right with God, there's power that moves in them. I wonder whether there's somebody here who has a past that is so ugly. Your ugly past was preparing you for a greater future. Your ugly past was preparing you for a greater future. I'm no longer what I used to be. I encountered Christ. No matter how I encountered him. But he found me. Mercy came running. Like a prisoner set free. The grace suspended the rules. The power changed my life. Mashanga Tihosia. He says you're chosen. Then he blinded him for three days. And the days of his blindness, God is closing him to the world he knows. That he may take him to the world that he doesn't know. My God, my God. Then he sends Ananias. He says, go and pray for him. Ananias says, Lord, you don't know whom you're sending me to. He was fighting against the church. But God says, don't mind about that. You only know the past. Between when you last saw him and where he is there was a divine encounter oh my god he's blind but blind for a better he's blind but blind for a season he's blind but blind to have a new beginning in life ladies and gentlemen there is a new beginning about to happen in your life in your church in your relationship in your family in your business in your health there is a new beginning that is about to happen check somebody say new beginning new beginning is on the way i'm blind for a while but i'm chosen i'm blind for a while but i'm chosen i don't see where i'm going but i'm chosen i don't see how it will be but i'm chosen i don't see how it will change but i'm already chosen Whoa. Somebody holler, chosen, chosen, chosen. Say it again, say I'm chosen. I'm chosen for miracles. I'm chosen for signs. I'm chosen for wonders. I'm chosen for change. I'm chosen for revival. Chosen to be a worshiper. Chosen to be a leader. Chosen to be a billionaire. Chosen to be a world changer. And the devil should know. No matter what the devil plans. No weapon formed against me. Shout! Oh, I'm chosen. Chosen for future. Chosen for greatness. Let the world hear me well. I'm not there yet, but I'm chosen for there. I walk blind, but Ananias is coming. I live blind, but Ananias is coming. I declare to you, may your helper find you. May your helper locate you. May your helper find your life help your life raise your life support your life empower your life makamba koshatoya mikando hoshada baka shake your neighbor and tell them my helper has been instructed my helper has been instructed 
my Jehovah God no matter what they know about me they shall raise me Molando Shatolaba oh Lord Mokamba Katoyamang this throws me back to the story of, of, of David and Mephibosheth. There comes a time when the king has to find you, no matter where you are. My God, David says, is there anybody remaining in the house of Saul that I may show him compassion for Jonathan's sake? Then Ziba says, there's one Mephibosheth in Lodebar. He was assigned to go and find him and go and fetch him ladies and gentlemen there is a helper coming your way there there is a financial helper somebody has been assigned to help your church somebody has been assigned to help your children somebody has been assigned to raise you in business somebody has been assigned to help you out of shame ladies and gentlemen the hour is now the savior has sent ah, find me my helper Ananias, obey the voice, open my eyes, the fire. Rilado Shile, Pandoko, oh Lord. And when Ananias prayed for him, then the journey begins. The past of his life has received an encounter. Before I switch and go any higher, never be bothered by people that know your past. They know your past, but they don't know your encounter. They have the last information of how wayward you used to be, how immoral you used to be. They know your predilections. They know your last full proclivities. They know your breaking down. But there's something they don't know. Somewhere along the way, I had an encounter. Jesus is the way. The way out of pain. The way out of sin. The way out of misery. The way out of problems. The way, 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 the way. Wow, shabo kombo kosha, akambo kosha nda da de osi ateli, ikambo hoshabara. And then when he begins the journey, God takes him to an encounter, oh Lord. He takes him to an encounter and he ascends to the third heavens. Now these are dimensions of growth, dimensions of divine empowerment. He went level one in the heavens, level two in the heavenlies, and level three. Ladies and gentlemen, to those of you that understand the Bible, the principalities and rulers of darkness, they have dimensions. Every heaven you break are the principalities broken every level you go to he went before the principalities above the demonic magistrates in the second heaven then the third heaven he finds an encounter the angels are talking but on his way back somebody say on his way back so on his way back there was given to him this is my pain and my question if God loves me why does he give me the phone if I was chosen why the phone why the phone I want to be spiritual but there's something so physical that drags me down yes you are a preacher but there's a phone the devil buffets you every day you preach and you see miracles boom then sin crops up in your life. You stand and you're powerful. Boom! The phone rises. You are a child of God, but struggling with a habit. You are a child of God, battling with cancer, battling with leukemia, fibromyalgia. When you worship, people see God. But on your way back home, the phone pricks you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord told me to tell you, no matter to the pain we are managing with a fawn in the flesh turn to two people tell them i have a phone but i'm managing tell them i have a phone but 
but I'm managing. I have a phone, but I'm managing. It is deadly to be a preacher operating in miracle. But in your family, there's somebody that is struggling with seizures. Oh my God. You have an epileptic child. You preach deliverance, but your family shows the devil. You preach healing, but in your blood, there is a virus. There is a thorn. Oh my God. You stand for people, but there is a debt demanding your house rent. God, where you remove the thorn. God says, never. My grace is sufficient. I will handle you. I will bless you. I will heal you. I will raise you. Oh, you better be ready. Makambo ya kolaba. Somebody say the phone. Say it again, say the phone. I don't know whether I'm talking to you. You don't know what it means to see visions of heaven. And after the visions, boom, your flesh begins to control you. Oh Lord. And you begin to cry. I remember David, a man after God's own heart. At one point, he destroyed Goliath. The Philistines, but when the phone arose, one evening he's by the hole, he's above the house, the phone is subjecting him. He's a warrior in battle, but a victim at home. He's a champion in warfare, but he's a defeatee in his lifestyle. They see you on the pulpit, they see your glory, but behind the curtain, there is a fawn, there is a pain, there is a weakness. Before you know it, boom, another mess, boom, another question. But I was to tell you, he knows the fawn, he knows it, he knows it. He shall handle it. He shall. He can handle the phone. He can handle the phone. I wish I was talking to you. He can handle. He can handle the phone. David, while he was there, then suddenly, when the phone began to prick, he looks at Uriah's wife, Beersheba, and the phone now drives him from the being a psalmist. He's a psalmist saying, The Lord is my shepherd. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Where was the shadow when the phone was there? Where was the light? He says, The Lord is my light. And my salvation, whom shall I fear? But when the phone comes, the light is nowhere. There is something in your life that draws you away from God. No matter how rich you look, there is a phone. No matter how anointed you are, there is a phone. No matter how good you dress, there is a phone. Some of you, it wakes you up at a weird hour and says, make a phone call. Because the phone has a demand. The devil is buffeting you. Boom, boom, boom. But the Lord told me to tell you, no matter what it is, you can manage. Yes, yes, yes. You can manage. Raise your hand and say, I will handle. I shall manage. Say it again, say, I shall manage. Are you ready to fly in the next five minutes? Somebody said the phone in my flesh. Shout it louder. Shout louder. Say the phone in my character. A phone in my personality. Now, theologians and Bible scholars have attested there are three dimensions to the phone. Dimension one, some of the theological writers and the Bible writers, they said that Paul was struggling with the epilepsy. That is what some Bible scholars say. Others say he had a leaking eye. Can you imagine raising the dead? And as you've just raised the dead, here comes epilepsy. Boom! There is a shame attached to your victory. You're victorious when you're standing for God. But you are a defeatee when you're standing by yourself. You dress to bless. But after blessing them, you go crying. You stand and the world praises you. And you even wonder why they praise you. Because there's something you know about you that God has hidden from them. You cry all night. A thorn in the flesh. 
a companion in the family that always pulls down your faith. When you're coming from fasting, that is when your husband comes drunk, 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 and drunk. Galloping and taking sips of beer. When you've just led worship in the church, that is when you realize your husband has a child out of wedlock. And you can't leave them. There's a thorn. Somebody holler thorn. You're standing for God, but things are standing against you. And yet God says, I refuse to remove it. My grace. Oh God. There are two questions I want, oh Lord. There are two questions I want to follow. Question number one. Question number one. Anybody that can help you, he has the power, the ability, and the potential to help you, but refuses to help you. It's a question of love. Do you really love me? Because if I have a date and it's just a, just a small date and I run to my best friend and I tell them now pull me out of the debt, pay this debt. And I know that guy is a millionaire, a billionaire or something. He throws money anywhere. If he refuses, it's a question of love. And it's another thing for somebody, to, you want somebody to help you. They say, I wish I would, but I don't have the ability. It's a question of power. God has the power. He has the love. But listen to me, sometimes in spite of how he loves you, Lazarus will stay sick. In spite of how he loves you, Lazarus will die. Oh my God. He loves you and he will leave the landlord to torture you. Somebody says, I thought you were encouraging us. Now you're drawing us down. No, you're not hitting rock bottom. We are rising as eagles. Listen. He says, now, whom whom thou loveth, if he really loves you, why doesn't he save you? He says, I know about the phone. But my grace is, Lord, give me a husband. I know you want a husband, but my grace. God, give me a wife. Everybody talks, yes, I know you want him. I may not give him now, but I will carry you in the wings of grace. Somebody shout the wings of grace. Now we are going, oh Lord, we are going higher that phone i will manage no matter what the phone is if god is on my side i will limp but i will preach i will cry but i will lead worship i will be abused but i shall stand i shall stand i want us to go into empowerment hour hold your neighbor say i will stand the phone is there now what next I refuse to be broken down. God knows about it. I prayed about it. But it's not going away. So I would rather hold on to the God of my encounter. Ladies and gentlemen, one day the phone will be no more. One day the pain will be no more. One day your family will recover. One day your joy will be there. Somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Say hallelujah, hallelujah. Say it again. Say hallelujah, hallelujah. The phone, the phone. Oh Lord, hold me. The phone, the phone. You are a pastor. There is a phone in the members. There is a believer who becomes a phone. Anytime you see them, boom. Your heart begins to, to bleed. God allows phones. But the grace will always be sufficient. Why? Because the strength of God is made perfect. When you don't know what to do, then God is stronger. When you don't know which way to turn, then God is stronger. I want to pray with you. You will conquer the phone. Say, I will conquer the phone. Say it again. Say, I will. I shall. I shall conquer the phone. Now hold that person next to you. Tell them this is the hour. Tell them this is the hour. Be empowered. Even when the phone is there. God is on your side. God is your defender. God is your sustainer. God is your miracle. God is your strong one. There is a miracle coming right now. There is a door that God is opening. There is a blessing that is about to happen. Now begin to pray for them. Empower them. Tell them the Lord has the power to raise you. You are in pain. But God is aware. You are in confusion. But God is
is aware. You are in misery. But God is aware. Raise your voice. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a miraculous that is about to happen. Yes, you managed. But the Bible says it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken from the shoulders and the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. Ladies and gentlemen, the anointing has come. I bind the yoke of the phone. I bind every sickness. Fire. Mandara Bayato. Tela Bayola. Bamfalo Teleba. Yes. 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 Miracle worker. Blood healer. Destiny changer. Makamba Yotelia. Now lose your neighbor. Raise your hands. Begin to go for yourself. Master. Deliver me. The pain is greater. The misery is greater. The sorrow is insurmountable. Savior. Hear my humble cry. While all of us, thou art calling, do not pass me by. Change me. Everybody raise your hands. Cry out. Raise your hands. Cry out. You are my Messiah. You are my sanctifier. Deliver me. God of my encounter. Change my story. Tell him, Lord. Change my status. Fight. Bandarabaya. Somebody raise a voice. Forget about your neighbor. Cry out. Hala. Call on the Lord. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the grace of God. The grace to build a house. The grace to survive AIDS. My God, my God, I wish there was a temperature higher in prayer. Raise your prayer temperature. Raise the thermometer. Where are the worshippers? Where are the desperate? If you want to kneel, break down in the presence of God. Be anointing. Fresh. Fire. Ladies and gentlemen, the heavens are open. The heavens are open. Wherever you are, come on, raise your voice. Raise a voice the enemy is there but God is there the phone is there but God is there he will never leave you nor forsake you everybody raise a voice raise up your hands fight I bind powers of disease virus of AIDS fire cancer leukemia lupus I render you powerless even you that are viewing wherever you are there is a miracle there is a fresh anointing choir I can't hear your voices Allah cry out Savior 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 Let your voice go higher. Let your voice go higher. Let your voice go higher. We are the desperate. We are the hungry. Forget about your neighbor. Cry out. Managing. Manage that phone in prayer. Manage that shame in prayer. Manage it. Manage it. Manage it. Fire. I hear the Lord tell me he's breaking the spirit of shame anybody that is battling with a shame in your marriage a shame in your finances a shame in your life raise your hands forget about the person close to you begin to cry out deliver me deliver me deliver me save me save me save me change me my pastor there is healing even those of us in the studio the healing virtue healing from disease healing from shame the fire 
Mando Shapunaba. Everybody watching. Servant of God. Bounce back. Get up right again. Stand again. You fail. You messed up. Don't stay down. God is aware. Arise. There is a hero in you. There is a giant in you. Shake off the dust. There is a new level. Right now. There are miracles everywhere. Come on. Somebody raise a voice. Cry out. Cry out. I wish your voice was louder. As the prayer is progressing anybody that is watching that is a backslider anybody that has never accepted Jesus to be your Lord and Savior anybody that is battling with sin battling with alcohol battling with immorality battling with lesbianism battling with homosexuality battling with lust battling with disease battling with a habit so bad that is destroying your spiritual life there is an answer for you. Whatever you're watching from, from near and far, touch your chest. Even as the studio is raising their voices in prayer, touch your chest. Say, Dear Jesus, forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Write my names in your eternal book of life. From today, I am born again. Forgive me. Rewrite my life. Give me the power. To manage the phone even on the other day I want to inherit your kingdom Jesus my Savior Jesus my Lord to you I belong in Jesus name Holy Spirit baptize me cover me transform me forever I'm yours give me the power to win in Jesus name may the blessing of the Lord be upon you I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the floor. Come and lift your voice. Continue praying. I will worship and give the praise to Him alone. Him who was and is and is to come. I will sing before. pastor to come and do the conclusion I want to invite my pastor to come and do the sum up come forth come forth my pastor wow thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you so much pastor Sam may God bless you I know if you are out there you're already blessed by this word. Surely, much as two things are following you, but the word of God will always be paramount. It will always rule over every situation that has been over your life. And I want to declare as we wind up that uh, God has prevailed. Your life will never be the same. As the pastor was preaching, uh, it just reminded me of Naaman in the Bible in 2 Kings chapter 5 where he was a very powerful man of God. I mean, a powerful fighter.
but at the end, whenever he would go back to his own house, he would realize that he had skin disease. Some of us have been like that. But I want to thank the Lord for this word that has come. It has come like how Elisha came into the life of Diamond.